Today, we're going to be talking about all the different types of public transportation and tickets in and around Munich. You've just landed in a foreign country, you're completely jet-lagged, disoriented, and honestly, you're just so far from caring about the extortionate cab fee to get from the airport. The train system is just completely unfamiliar. How would you even purchase the correct ticket? Where do you go? Who do you speak to? And you've already landed, it's too late for research. But it's not, because luckily for you, you're at home watching a video, and I'm here ready to demystify the entire German city public transportation network for you. Firstly, by showing you all the different vehicle options that you're liable to experience here in Germany. Secondly, we'll go over all the different ticketing types so that you can always pick the best value during your trip. And then lastly, we're going to be going out into the field because listen close, like and subscribe, and you're going to be traveling the Munich transportation system like a pro. Perhaps if you listen close enough, you'll be complaining like one too. Sometimes the S-Bahn is broken. Before we get into transit types, a few disclaimers. I'll be skipping all long distance trains, as to keep this video city focused. Although Munich is my example, the transit types will apply to all German cities. Company names or ratios between different types of vehicles that are available to you may change, but the principles are going to remain the same. Now that that's out of the way, the types of vehicles you're likely to encounter in Munich are as follows. First, we have the S-Bahn, or suburban train. These have a green logo with a white S, and take passengers in and around the city and to the surrounding suburban areas, as the name suggests, often mixing together above ground rails and underground tunnels. This train is going to be pulling double duty, sometimes kind of seeming more like a subway, and then others, a local express train. Side note, this is also the train type that you'll be taking to and from the airport. Next up, we have the U-Bahn, or underground train, found by its blue sign with a white U. As implied, this train runs mostly in underground tunnels. But things can't be simple, U-Bahns are the common bread and butter for getting around within the city, as they rarely leave the central metropolitan area. Often though, the difference between the U-Bahn and the S-Bahn can feel a bit blurry, as the trains often share stations. But don't worry about it, you'll catch on to it real quick. Slightly lesser known are the Strassenbahns, or the streetcars. You might know them as trolleys. Running on tracks on the road themselves, these things can often be overlooked, as people tend to favor the aforementioned trains. But don't be fooled, these are massively convenient and go places that just aren't feasible for a big train, making stops right out front of cool bars and lived in spaces. Riding on these can also be a lot of fun, as instead of being stuck in stuffy tunnels, you're in a light and airy carriage strolling down the beautiful streets. And lastly, of course we have buses. I think we all know what they are, but I will say this, don't be shy. The bus network here is pretty great, and it really isn't as daunting as it sounds. Sometimes, they simply are just the most convenient way of getting where you need to go. Let's talk about tickets. You're going to have two basic types, point to point and value. One of the great things about German public transport is that even though all these vehicle types are operating by different companies and all these vehicles are so different, the tickets and the machines that sell them often aren't. And with value tickets, you can easily mix and match the different types, no problem. So what do we have on offer? Well, the easiest to discuss will be the point-to-point -point ticket. On the ticketing machine, you'll key in which station you're in and which station you'd like to go to. Then you'll simply receive a paper ticket that's good for a few hours, but for only one journey. The meaning of this is that even if you miss that first train that you kind of thought you were going to go on, it's no problem to just wait around and take the next one. However, this is, as I said, a single one-way trip, so don't try and use that same ticket going back. That's going to be considered black or dark riding, riding without a ticket. And if you get caught, you'll have to pay a pretty steep penalty. In Munich, that's going to be about 60 euro per dark rider, and they often don't let you off the hook. Doesn't matter how confused you seem. As you can imagine, racking up point-to-point -point tickets can get pricey, especially when traveling as a family. That's why we need to look at the next type of ticket, the value ticket, which will be offered by your local transportation association. So region to region, they might differ. For Munich, the association is the MVV or MVV in English. They offer single day tickets, multi day tickets, and group tickets. I recommend getting those as they can be absolutely fantastic value. My rule of thumb is that if I'm going to be taking a minimum of three trips on train or bus that day, I'm going to buy a day ticket as they offer unlimited rides on all the different types of vehicles. So no matter what, I'm covered. What's best and even better, you're going to be covered for as many people as you buy the ticket for, which is how you get your group tickets. That way, it'll be valid for my whole group as long as 
as we stay within the city zones. What I mean by that is that because the buses and the S-Bahn can be very far reaching, their network is separated into zones to offer you the best possible fare. As you don't want to be paying the same price if you're only going around the Altstadt, the central city, as someone who's going to be taking it all the way out into the suburbs. It just makes sense to split them up. Important Munich tip though, as of January 2020, they redid their zones to make it much easier, consolidating what would have been multiple zones into one large Munich or M zone. So for a majority of you out there, the value ticket that you're going to want is just zone M. And if you've been looking up guides that might be a bit outdated, they could be saying something like zones one through two, one through three. You can safely ignore most of that, meaning now all you have to worry about is the size of your group and your duration. With all those bases covered, let's get to some live examples to hammer it all in. A few quick tips and tricks worth mentioning before we dive into the examples. DB ticket machines all look alike across Germany, with a distinct bright red shell and logos in the top right corner. You're going to recognize those as the vehicle logos we covered earlier. This is important because not all of the machines offer tickets for all of the transport types. 95% of them do, but I'd ensure the machine you use has the appropriate stickers just in case. Something to look out for. Another point I'd like to mention is more specifically for Americans, whose banks have been slow in adopting the chip and pin system. Often having the chip, but instead of the pin, falling backwards and requiring the old-fashioned hand scribbles instead. This can cause major headaches at European ticket machines, which require a pin number with any chip use. So make sure you have that set up and know your pin. Pro tip, add your card to Apple, Google, Samsung Pay, as most readers accepting credit cards will also accept contactless payments, which don't require a pin. This can speed up the whole process and save you some headaches, not just at these machines, but in general. So let's pretend we've just landed in at the Munich airport. First things first, where specifically are we going? For this example, I've chosen a hotel right near the Munich Hauptbahnhof Central train station, as that's pretty common. I don't plan on taking more trips today since I'm pretty tired from the flight, so a point-to-point -point ticket makes the most sense for me. To get this done, I open up Google Maps and plug in the hotel, as you probably do as well. It says I should take the S1 from the München Flughafen to the Munich Central train station. It also says that I can wait and take the S8 a little later. Nice to have options. So let's go over to the bright red DB ticket machine and buy this ticket. These machines are available at every station, but not on the platform. Instead, within the station lobby. For the airport, that's in the arrivals area, right before the escalators to the underground platform. On the interface, switch the language to English via the Union Jack at the bottom of the screen, unless you're feeling particularly adventurous. And you'll notice in the top left, our current station is already pre-programmed in the From section, so just leave that alone. Click the two box. You may select from a list of common stations on the left, or just type it in on the keyboard. Note that this is a German keyboard, and vowels with umlaut are considered different letters. So don't type a U when you meant an umlaut U, as it won't autocorrect for you even in English mode. Google Maps is helpful here too, as spelling can be a major challenge for new tourists. From here, we can select a single ticket or one of the combos. We've decided on a single journey already, so that's what I'll do. With everything squared away, we can now go ahead and pay. There you go, huh, nice and easy. Not so intimidating after all. Collect your tickets and your receipt, then make your way to the platform and you're good as gold. Unlike many other Metro systems, there's gonna be no gate or attendant checking tickets only the occasional conductor making the rounds on the train during transit, often making it feel unnecessary to purchase a ticket. But please don't dark ride. You might save a few euros here and there, but the moment you're caught with that 60 euro fee, man, it's gonna hurt. As you move towards the train, pay attention to your platform. All train lines run in both directions, so if you aren't paying attention, it's easy to go the wrong way. Again, Google Maps can be really helpful as it often knows the platform or at least the direction that you're supposed to be going. And as you walk through the station, there should be both maps and explicit in the direction of of markers to help you out. When all goes well, you'll be at your hotel in no time. Great job. Now let's skip to the next day and do our last example. We've woken up bright and early, ready to see as much of the city as we can. The itinerary is pretty spread out though and not very feasible for taxis or walking. So let's pick up a group combo ticket for the squad. Go to the red machine as before, but rather than typing in a destination like last time, click on the MVV, our regional transit authority logo in the center of the screen. Once clicked, all you have to do next is select the correct value ticket. I'll be taking a group day ticket, but check the other office to fit your situation. Next, I'll select which ring or zone that I need. You'll almost always be fine with just the M zone, but do double check with your itinerary. You don't want to end up in a zone not included in your ticket, because that's also dark writing. Then, just pay like yesterday. Super easy. Hopefully, with these examples under your belt, you're now ready to tackle the German public transportation system.